Hey Miko, how's it going? I try to see great. Yeah, I know. Thanks for coming. I love all the work you've done with um, Angular Seed, and I know you've been doing a lot of work with the compiler. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit more about that. I know you've been doing a lot of exploration into the compiler lately. Yes, uh, I've been playing with it. I'm actually using it in a little bit unconventional way, not mm -hmm. exactly how the Angular team were using it in Angular internally. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently I'm using it for just visualization of source code. I, I did some crazy visualization, like uh, rendering an Angular application in 3D Minecraft world. That, that was so cool. Fun. Yeah, that was fun. You can walk around your source code and see the individual modules, which are gardens. Yeah. You can go into the garden, which uh, has a lot of trees, which are your, your components. <laughs> that is so beautiful. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's fun. I don't know how practical it is, but it's definitely fun to do that. I, I actually think that doing something like this is going to be really helpful, potentially, for children yeah. to learn code and understand this whole idea of modules and trees and the idea that it's a garden. and. Yeah. On very high level, actually, you can even judge uh, the quality of the source code. For instance, if you have a module with right. uh, a lot of components, uh -huh. like maybe hundreds of components, this means that maybe your organization is not very well and you, your code is not very well structured. Mm -hmm. Same if you see a tree with a huge crown. This means that your template is far too complicated. Really? Yeah. Wow. So it must be, it's, it's almost kind of like easier, let's say you're going into a job interview or something and you want to sort of get an idea of how the team uh, codes, instead of going through all their source code, you can just <laughs> visualize it and say, I don't want to go in this garden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you should totally do that. I think it would work out. Yeah, it's already an NPM module, actually. You can find it. Uh, yeah, it's NG World. <laughs> Very NG World. I'll totally, is, is it just... NG world or NG dash world or NG world, yeah, without that shit. So, oh so exciting. So I know there's a lot of really cool sort of lower level stuff related to the compiler. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, sure. So uh, I've been using the compiler mostly for analyzing the entire output that it produces. Mm -hmm. So I've been uh, using the compiler in order to make sure that given project follows the Angular style guide, for instance. And uh, also I've been using it for verifying that some of the styles that you have declared inside of your component are actually used in the template. So if you have dead styles which uh -huh. are not actually used, you will be able to see that in your text editor or ID. Really? Yeah. Really? It's cool because if you, this can decrease the bundle size of your application a lot. Imagine if you don't have dead CSS at all and so all the CSS that you have in your application is actually CSS that you're using. Mm -hmm. This means that, uh, well, your application is as small as possible. You don't have anything that you're not using it all, so yeah, that's what I'm working on. And uh, also a tool for automated migrations. Mm -hmm. Right now, Angular 4 is already out. Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, we have template, which is no longer called template, it's ng template. Mm -hmm. And it's, you can search and replace for all templates and turn them into ng templates. But sometimes this is going to break your source code. For instance, if you have a string which mm -hmm. has a template element inside, mm -hmm. which is not inside of the template of the component, mm -hmm. Uh, this is going to like break the content of this property, for instance, the string property. So I built a tool which, based on uh, the compiler and static code analysis, can provide some uh, code transformations. And uh, this way, it can also migrate your application to a newer version of Angular automatically. You just need to run a script, and that's it. Oh my gosh, so you're basically solving all the migration issues. Yeah, maybe not all of them. <laughs> yeah, but Most of them. Trying to solve some of them. This oh, is that's so great. Yeah, thank you. This is based on some great work that Alex Eagle from the core team did, also Martin and Chuck. Mm -hmm. So this, is, this work is just uh, using their work as base. And uh, yeah, they really did an amazing job. <gasps> so awesome. I also uh, remember we had a conversation about the compiler and the, the shape and why the compiler oh, yeah. is faster. Yeah, that's actually the, why the compilation happened in the first place. It, the idea of the compiler is that it transforms our application to some more efficient version of itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes advantage of some pretty low level optimizations that the JavaScript virtual machine actually does. Mm -hmm. And uh, in general, there is an optimization called inline caching, which, um, for instance, if a given piece of code accepts an object and uh, the 
this piece of code after that needs to access a specific property of this object. It needs to know how to do that. If you are passing constantly objects with different shape, the virtual machine needs mm -hmm. to perform uh, an algorithm in order to know how to get the, the specific property each time. Instead, the JavaScript virtual machine performs this uh, inline caching, which is just it just caches how the specific property can be gotten from object with specific shape. So I know you're also involved in both the React and the Angular community, yes? Or you write React as well? Yeah. Right. I've been using React uh, for <laughs> a couple of projects. <laughs> so you're much more active in the Angular community. Yeah. So why is that? Uh -huh. I, I enjoy both technologies, uh -huh. definitely. Yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, React is a bit more minimalistic. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't provide the entire platform. It provides a library for, of course, they, they have an entire ecosystem on top of it. Right. But it mostly provides some uh, view engine, mm -hmm. uh, provides rendering engine mm -hmm. by using this uh, virtual DOM. It uh, just happens that uh, I'm really passionate about statically typed languages, uh -huh. like uh, what Angular is using TypeScript. I know that there is an alter alternative in the React world flow. Right. Uh, I just, I guess, I, I'm more experienced with this, and I have used it in more projects, mm. I suppose. It sounds like also maybe there's more things. There's a bigger ecosystem to build on top of or something. Yes. Like more ability to contribute to tooling. And yes. That's a great point. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Cool. Thank you so much for this interview. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Where do we find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, GitHub, uh, with uh, name there, M. Getchev. Perfect, thanks. Thank you. Hey there, are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? Then join this dot instructor, Ben Lesh, to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. Available online and in person, go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today. Hey there, do you use Angular? Do you like fun in the sun? And how do you feel about boats? If you're nodding yes, then uh, come join us on NG Cruise to learn more about Angular while on a fabulous Caribbean cruise. Check out ngcruise.com for speaker lineup, workshop details, and to book your spot today.